Hello everyone. Welcome to textbook. Have a nice day. Today, I'm going to explain the poetry, Sonnet 65, and I've also provided the PDF. You'll get the PDF in the description. So, let us now, learn something about the sonnet. Sonnet 65 is one of 154 sonnets, written by William Shakespeare. It has, 14 lines, 3 quatrains, and a couplet. Each quatrain consists of four lines, and the couplet with two lines. So, let's understand the first quatrain. Since brass, nor stone, nor earth, nor boundless sea, but sad mortality oversways their power, how with this rage, shall beauty hold a plea, whose action is no stronger, than a flower? In the sonnet, Shakespeare present, time is a great destroyer, and creator, and, Mortality is a powerful giant, who exists in all human, and natural things, including, brass, stone, the earth, and even the sea, and make them vanished, with course of time. In the quoted lines, Shakespeare starts the sonnet, by asking a question, that since even long-lasting objects, like, brass, stone, earth, and boundless sea cannot survive, or sustain forever, how can a very delicate, and fragile thing like beauty, last or survive for long? He feels that, it is sad mortality that oversways their power, thereby, meaning, that mortality is more powerful than brass, stone, earth, and boundless sea, and these things cannot survive, against a devastation of time, for a long duration of time, and time will certainly override them. Time's rage spares none in the world, and every object, and living being on earth, is subject to destruction and death. The strength of beauty, is not more than that of a flower. Both are supposed to be powerless, as they cannot withstand, the ruins of time, and are supposed to be easily destroyed. Now, let's understand, the second quatrain. Oh, how shall, summer's honey breath, hold out, against the wreckful siege of, battering days, when rocks impregnable, are not so stout, nor gates of steel so strong, but time decays. In the quoted lines, the poet says, that even the mild, fragrant summer breeze, which carries, the scent of flowers, thereby making it honey-like, cannot survive for long, against, the wreckful grip of pounding days. So, the beautiful flowers, and sweet fragrance, of the summer days, also cannot survive, forever and these are also sure to decay, with the passage of time. When impregnable rocks, and steel gates, are not strong enough, to resist the destruction, caused by the time, how can a fragile, and weak thing like beauty, can stop time from causing devastation and destruction? Now, let's move, to the third quatrain. O fearful meditation! Where, alack, shall time's best jewel, from time's chest lie hid? Or what strong hand, can hold his swift foot back? Or who, his spoil of beauty, can forbid? In the quoted lines, the poet says, that the fear, or apprehension of the poet becomes evident, in these lines, and he feels that, even his love fair youth, cannot be spared by time, and he will also, die some day. This very thought, fills him with terrible fear. He feels, that even the best jewel of time, the fair youth, will have to enter, the chest, or coffin of time. The poet also knows, that none in the world, can be strong enough, to hold the, swiftly moving feet of time. He also asks, as, to, who, can forbid time, from spoiling, the beauty, and he himself supposes, that none in the world can do so. So, now, let's understand, the couplet. Oh, none, unless, this miracle have might, that in black ink, my love may still shine bright. The quoted lines, conclude the poem, with poet's affirmation, that none can stop time, from causing devastation, and destruction, for he considers, time, to be the most powerful, in the world. But he believes, and says, that, it is only in his mighty, and miraculous verses, written in black ink, that the fair youth, can shine brightly forever. He, thus, establishes the supremacy of poetry over all material. 
Thank you for watching. Hope you liked the explanation.